The Bloc Québécois is demanding Prime Minister Justin Trudeau apologize for what happened during the October crisis of 1970. The War Measures Act was invoked at, at that time by his father, Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau. It was in response to the FLQ's kidnapping of Deputy Premier Pierre Laporte and British diplomat James Cross. That move led to the detention of hundreds of Quebecers. So, where do all the parties stand? Well... We've brought together a panel of MPs to talk about just that. Joining me now is the NDP's Peter Julian for the Conservative Party, Gérard, de, Gérard Dertel from the Bloc Québécois, Christine Normandin, the party's deputy house leader, and Steve McKinnon is here on behalf of the Liberals. Welcome everyone to the program. Madame Normandin, I'd like to start with you, given that this is the Bloc's motion. Um, mm -hmm. The context in which this is happening, you, you know just as well as I do, more than 10,000 Canadians have, have died from COVID, that more than half of those deaths have actually happened in the province of Quebec. There are so many life and death issues facing your province, this country right now. Why is it the right time to look back 50 years? Well, if it's not the right time on the eve of the 50th of anniversary of the War Measures Act, when would the right time be? And an apology would have taken only eight, ten seconds to make in Parliament. And uh, it, it's sad that I see uh, that it's from the government that we're accused of losing time uh, when it's them who prorogue Parliament for six weeks. So I think that if it's not the right time now, no, well, but, it never but, will be. But even for, your, even for your own party, I mean, the, there are so many issues. I mean, I think of long-term care, for instance, as a, as a subject that could be the, the focal point right now. Well, it's maybe our first opposition day during this uh, current legislature, but uh, the first that we had as a uh, when the new legislature started was with regards to giving um, uh, insurance employment um, fifty weeks when people are with uh, have long term sicknesses, mm -hmm. and it was it, it, we we didn't have uh, the 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 government to follow us on that. So it, it, I, I don't see why we cannot take only one day to discuss this when we have discussed plenty of things and made su suggestions and went along with the government when, when it was needed. And I, I, re I repeat myself, but it would have taken eight seconds for the government to uh, give apologies and we would be over it right now. I'm going to press you one more time because this is indeed your motion. I, I, I note the columnists in the province of Quebec have written to suggest that perhaps uh, the federal government ought to offer an apology but if that is true, that indeed uh, the province of Quebec ought to as well. They point out that, for instance, Robert Bourassa, the Quebec premier at the time, asked for these powers. So why not make a broader demand for an apology of other levels of government? Because we're in the in the federal parliament, and as soon as you make uh, a mistake and you realize you made a mistake, an apology should be owed. And there's two ways to see it. Either at the time it was a political response uh, to break the sovereignist movement, and it was not justified at all to uh, enact the War Measures Act. So the the apology should have been given. At day one. But, but the Quebec really population really broadly supported it at the time. Parties in the National Assembly, representatives for all yes. parties in Quebec's National Assembly, stood up and said that this, this was the right course of action. But we have to look at it right now. Uh, there were other people incarcerated under the War Measure Acts, uh, the War, War Measures Act. It was the Chinese and, uh, not Chinese, the uh, Japanese and um, Italian Canadians. And nobody said, well, at that time, it was reasonable to imprison them. We, we have to look at the context right now. And we know right now that it was a mistake. It was totally unjustified. So since we know right now it was a mistake, there's no reason why we shouldn't apologize. And why apologize to them, whereas we don't apologize to the Quebecers who were imprisoned during October uh, of 17th? The, I, I see that as a I mean, political uh, issue. I, I suppose there, there's, I think, some daylight between uh, Japanese internment camps and uh, several days in prison, but I do want to get to the Liberals in all of this, since they're the ones you're trying to press with this motion. So, Steve McKinnon, you know I'm coming around to you. Um, Yves-François Blanchet today talking about people suddenly being held at gunpoint in their own home for political views that they held. Do you accept that, 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 that a situation like that, people who were thrown in prison for days, uh, never in, even interrogated, let alone charged, that that, that should not have happened? Uh, that uh, that would be fine if that were the motion we were debating today. What the motion that we were debating today, uh, Catherine, was uh, was a complete whitewash of history, completely forgot and left out the assassination, the political assassination, in the context of the times uh, of of uh, the deputy premier of Quebec, the kidnapping of a foreign diplomat, dozens and dozens of mailbox bombings. I mentioned a woman from. 
Vanier, just down the street from uh, where I'm standing right now, who was the victim of a bomb, people forget, at the but Department of National Defense. Surely it is uh, not all or nothing, though, right? I mean, those, those deaths happen, but does that give carte blanche for well, throwing people in jail and never explaining why to them? The problem is the bloc has selective amnesia when it comes to these issues. And, uh, and we have a, a, a duty to remember uh, the context of the times. And I, I think it's very interesting, you know, the line of questioning you were pursuing. The Bloc Québécois says it exists to represent the Quebec consensus in Parliament. Well, 50 years ago, as you just said, there was an absolute Quebec consensus. Uh, and uh, if the Bloc were here in 1970, would it? have respected the wishes of the democratically elected mayor of Montreal, the democratically elected opposition and government in the National Assembly in Quebec? Would it have itself uh, uh, advocated for those positions? And if not, uh, I think it, the bloc owes us a duty to explain uh, why it would not have done that. These, these decisions were all made 50 years ago in a larger context, in a context of political violence, in a context of great trouble and great concern among Canadians and Quebecers. And I think that uh, what the blog is trying to do today is to narrow that down and make us forget everything else that happened. Mad Madame Normandie, I do promise that I'm going to give you a chance to respond, but I, I, I suspect that other folks, I know that other folks on this panel are going to have things to say about your motion as well, and I want you to be able to get to all of it. So, Monsieur Deltel, I'd like to turn to you next. Um, you have accused the blocks, the block, the block of playing politics here. You've also said that Quebec should apologize. I saw a headline in Le Devoir to that effect, and I, and I wonder if you could talk to me a little bit more about why you think that. Well, because when we talk about apologies, we talk about who is responsible of what. And what we have seen in that situation is that the Quebec government asked for the army and asked for this bill. So it was a Quebec demand, and the Canadian government said yes to a Quebec demand. We all know and we all recognize that there was police abuse during those arrestations. We all recognize that. But we also have the duty to recognize that it was the Sûreté du Québec, the Quebec police group, who were there to supervise and to call the shot of those arrestations. Yes, the army was there, but the army was supportive of the police action, and those actions were coordinated by the Sûreté du Québec. And more than that, a few months after October 17th, on March the 12th, 1971, the National Assembly, the Justice Minister, offered compensation for those who have been uh, uh, arrested by the, by the police at that time. So there is three things to keep in mind. The Quebec government asked for, the, for, for that, asked for the army, and asked for this uh, law. The Quebec government was the one who called the shot. The Quebec police was the one who called the shot for the arrestation. And the Quebec government, the fact to recognize their all responsibility by offering compensation for those. And at that time, in the speech of the National Assembly, I wrote, I wrote them, I, 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 I saw them exactly, and no one talked about what is the responsibility of the federal government. Because when we were in office, conservative, we tabled some, uh, some uh, apologize. Yes, for the Asian Canadian who suffered 20 of them, 20,000 of them, men, women, children, spending more than three years in concentration, concentration camp. We apologize because this responsibility, 100% of this responsibility, belong to the federal government. Same thing for the uh, apologize offer by the Prime Minister Harper in 2008 for the First Nation for the, uh, for the school. So this is why when the federal government is 100% responsible responsible of something, yes, we do apologize, but in that case, the responsibility belongs to the Quebec government. Okay. Canada say yes to Quebec and we have to apologize? No. I am, uh, Madame Normandie, I'm going to let you have the last word, but Mr. Julian, I want to bring you in because I think your party's position on this is quite interesting. On the one hand, you point out that historically you, you were the ones uh, who raised concerns under Tommy Douglas about the War Measures Act, but Jagmeet Singh is also saying uh, this isn't the time for this, this isn't what Quebecers are asking him about. Are you trying to sort of have your cake and eat it too a bit, saying yes, on the one hand it's an issue, but on the other hand I don't really know that we should pursue it right now? Well, it, regardless of whether we should or we shouldn't, uh, it is before the House of Commons and, and we'll be voting in favor of that, mm -hmm. uh, the motion, because uh, for for very important reasons. Uh, Tommy Douglas uh, stood uh, along with the NDP caucus 
uh, those many decades ago and, and asked those important questions because people were being thrown in prison uh, for nothing other than their political beliefs. Uh, they, had, they were not suspected uh, in any way of violence, but they uh, did have political beliefs that uh, were sovereignists. Um, and in Canada, we live by the rule of law and we always need to remember uh, that our political opinions should not be subject to government fiat. So the fact that hundreds of people were arrested for their peaceful uh, political beliefs is something that I, I think we do need to learn from. And so uh, is this the time? I, I think Jagmeet Singh is absolutely right uh, that there are higher priorities, but it is uh, a motion that is before the House of Commons. Mm -hmm. And it is important, I think, for the government to respond appropriately and respond uh, uh, in, in a way that they didn't. When Tommy a Douglas asked those tough questions that uh, uh, Pierre Trudeau were, was unable to answer, the, the government does should should apologize for the many that were imprisoned uh, for their political beliefs. Yeah, and yet it doesn't seem, uh, Madame Nelmonde, we're going to finally get back around to you here. It doesn't seem that they will. It doesn't seem that the votes are there for this motion to pass. And in any case, it's non-binding. But Madame Normandé, the suggestion from the Liberals there that you're essentially engaging in revisionist history and uh, Monsieur Deltel saying, listen, at the end of the day, this falls at the feet of the province. What do you say to all of that? Well, we're not trying to erase what happened, and we're we still uh, we're still against violence in, in in any means of violence, and we we don't agree with the fact that Pierre Laporte was a, was murdered. It has nothing to do with that. Uh, it it has to do with what what we know so now, and we know now that, that it was not, it was not, not justified. That? We have it's not justified that those people were arrested at that not time. In the now motion. we know it was a mistake. Uh, Jean Marchand has sorry, mentioned it was killing killing a fly with a cannon. And if, if, if it was okay back then to have the government listen to what Quebec was asking, why is it not okay to listen to Quebec unanimously asking for apologies? Okay, well, we're, we're going to leave it there. I believe the vote in this is on Monday. Thank you all for a very uh, spirited debate. It may be 50 years ago, but obviously uh, still a lot of strong feelings about it now. Thank you all. The Bloc Québécois is demanding an apology from the federal government over its invocation of the War Measures Act during the 1970 October crisis. It is coming in the form of a motion, which was debated in the House of Commons today. The vote for that motion is slated for next week, but even if it passes, and it doesn't look like it will, it's non-binding. So, should there be an apology? Why are we talking about this now? And what is the political strategy behind the Bloc's push? Let's ask the power panel. David Hurley is a partner with the Gandalf Group and host of the Hurley Burley podcast. Jenny Byrne is a former top staffer to Prime Minister Stephen Harper and Ontario Premier Doug Ford. She's now a principal at Jenny Byrne and Associates. Andrew Thompson is the Chief of Government Relations for the University of Toronto and former Saskatchewan Finance Minister. And Daniel Turp is a former Bloc MP, now a law professor professor at the Université de Montréal. He's also president of the Research Institute on Self-Determination. And Sherelle Evelyn is the managing editor for The Hill Times, a jam-packed power panel. We're happy to have all of you there. Um, Mr. Turp, perhaps, Mr. Turp, I will start with you because obviously we're, we're particularly interested to get your, your take on this motion by the Bloc Québécois. There has been plenty of suggestion that this is the Bloc playing a bit of politics here, that this is not the most pressing issue before them. Certainly that is something that the Conservatives suggested today. What do you make of that? Well, it becomes pressing when, when it's the idea is that 50 years later, 50 years after the October crisis, no, no excuses have been ever made to people that were arrested, detained, uh, and that had nothing to do with the FLQ. And, and you know, people here have been asking for, for, for those excuses since Apologies, then, yes. and especially the people especially the people that were arrested and detained. And even Monsieur Legault the other day when asked if there should be some apologies on the part of the government, he said, yes, there should be. So I think the Bloc is doing something that people here in Quebec want them to do. I wonder what about the fact, Monsieur Turp, that um, this prime minister's last name is Trudeau. Does that not play into this as well, that there is some desire to see the son apologize for uh, what happened under the father? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. And, and I think there's a link, obviously. Uh, uh, but, you know, the fact remains that, you know, apologies uh, should be made, whether it be Mr. Trudeau or before him, Stephen Harper, or any prime minister of Canada that was became prime minister after the October crisis. You know, the fundamental rights of 
Hundreds of people were, were breached in, in, in 1970. Uh, people that had nothing to do with the FLQ, you know, poets like Gérald Godin, singers like Pauline Julien. So the idea that there should be apologies has always been, you know, an idea that was relevant. And now that Mr. Trudeau, the son, is prime minister, he's the one who should apologize. David, I'd like to bring you in here um, and ask you particularly about something Mr. Blanchette said today. Uh, he referenced how often Justin Trudeau has apologized for things. And he, he was quite, um, you know, Monsieur Blanchette loves a good turn of phrase. So he said, uh, you know, Justin Trudeau apologizes when it snows. He apologizes for everything. Why can't he apologize for this? How do you respond to that? Well, I, I think yeah, the flipness of that is an indication of the politics behind all of this. I, I understand that there's a bit more relevance to this in Quebec than elsewhere because it is the 50th anniversary and I understand that there's a television series about Paul Rose that's uh, creating a lot of interest in Quebec. And so this is of some relevance for people in the rest of the country. I think this is you know, incredibly jarring um, and uh, in the middle of the pandemic and, and you know, probably illustrates what I think Parizo said the best function of the bloc was, was to piss everybody else in Canada off. Um, and uh, so I think it, it probably achieved some of that purpose. But, you know, in Quebec, it's a the fact is that when the issues in Quebec are on national issues, are on national challenges, and not on local Quebec issues, mm -hmm. the bloc doesn't have a lot to say. They don't have a lot to add to that debate, and it makes them less competitive with the Trudeau Liberals in Quebec. So they're obviously anxious to shift away from the pandemic and from the management of COVID, et cetera, and start talking about something on which they think that the Liberals are on weaker ground in Quebec and they're on stronger ground in Quebec. Jenny, talk to me a bit about what the politics of this might be for the, the Conservatives. Well, I think what the Conservatives were saying today, and I want to kind of echo what, what David said in terms of probably the motivation behind uh, the block motion, but uh, Quebec right now is the uh, is the province with the highest unemployment. It's, it's got a 17% unemployment. Uh, there, there are 1,000 cases a day uh, that are still uh, are still being reported with COVID. 15,000 uh, people currently have uh, COVID in the, in the province. And you look at the city of Montreal, there was a study out uh, earlier today uh, that said that close to 50% of uh, Montrealers between the ages of 18 18 and 34 are experiencing, are experiencing uh, depression and anxiety throughout this pandemic. So I think that uh, although the bloc is trying to uh, put this motion forward for relevancy, I think the, the vast majority, the average Quebecer, has much a much different uh, level of priorities, uh, different priorities right now. Andrew, do you have any thoughts? I don't know if I'm putting you on the spot here. I don't want to do that. But uh, like, what else, what would have been a better choice for, for the bloc if not this? I mean, the, the point uh, made by Madame Normandin when we did an MP panel earlier in the show was it takes eight seconds to apologize and we've raised other issues like employment insurance in the past. This is relevant to the people of Quebec. Uh, is she right about that? I think uh, in large part, yes. I mean, this is a, anytime you're confronted with taking away the rights of Canadians, whether that's uh, what we saw happen here in Toronto during the G20 or what we saw happen in uh, Quebec uh, when they brought in martial law, which is a much more extreme case, uh, I think there does need to be some kind of a, a statement to rectify that. Uh, and this is, I disagree a little bit with David on the sense that this can just be a Quebec's problem. Uh, I think that, the, you know, a party that pretends to wrap itself in the charter uh, needs to be able to to make peace with its history. Uh, so I do think the Liberals should be apologizing for that. I think they should be stepping up and being clearer about uh, what else they, they need to apologize. Uh, Bill Blair's uh, continued involvement as public safety minister at a point when we've just had a damning report on what uh, happened under the G20 in Toronto here, uh, I think uh, brings these issues to life uh, for Canadians. They do understand there's very real threats to civil liberties. And uh, when they're breached, uh, there should be apologies. Sherelle, I'd like to bring you in and uh, perhaps have you talk a bit about like the idea that this is an interruption in the, the, the political dialogue that's been going on at this time, or, or just anything you want to say about how the Prime Minister's responded to this. Well, the idea that it's a it's a disruption, you can see that from the way that the many of the Liberals who were you know, speaking during the debate on this motion, we're handling it. They were barely even talking about the motion itself. They were just talking about, you know, there's a pandemic going on. Here's all the things that the government has done and is doing for the people of Quebec during, you know, this public health emergency. So they're using the time to to 
shift that attention back to where I guess they think it needs to be. But on the issue of apologies, I mean, the whole reason that we give apologies is because the government of the day did something that history has proven was the wrong choice. Mm. Whether or not, though, this particular motion that the bloc has put forward, you know, is enough to to say, you know, this I'm apologize. The country is apologizing for the wrongs that were committed. It's not it's not very clear right now because, you know, as as we just heard from the MPs, you know, there there is no mention of the broader context, if that needs to be in there at all. I don't know if there's a wording of the motion that would actually, you know, an interesting make question. anybody yeah. and everybody happy. Yep. But I don't know if this particular motion is the one that's going to make it make it work. Uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. Mr. Tripp, I've sort of seen you smiling through all this. We really don't have much time left, but just a quick closing thought on this issue. The fact of the matter is that 50 years ago, Mr. Trudeau, who was a professor of civil liberties in my law faculty, Université de Montréal, did something that, you know, breached human rights and, and it's not acceptable. And whether it's COVID now or whether it's something before, before or something after, apologies should be given, should have been given a long time ago to all these people that were victims of breach of their fundamental rights. But you'll hear about it because there's now a case in front of the Superior Court of Quebec and there's going to be a legal challenge of what happened in 1970. So look forward to hearing a lot about what happened in, in 1970 in the October crisis in the next months and years. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.